Relentless Together chat, Relentless Together chat series for Tobacco Endgame. My name is Kayla. I'm 18 years old and I live in El Paso, Texas, and I am a member of the Tobacco Endgame movement and currently serve on the Tobacco Endgame Advisory Group. And today we are going to be covering an introduction to tobacco policy. Next slide, please. I definitely think that the flavors of um, tobacco and nicotine products now is definitely to target younger people because my generation, we grew up with people saying don't smoke. We grew up with stories of our grandparents and our, um, our older family members using um, cigarettes and stuff like that. And so to us, that stuff is just, you know, it's kind of gross, if I'm being honest with you. And so, yes, I do think that now they're coming up with flavors because, you know, it doesn't seem as disgusting as it once did. Now this new wave is coming from flavored tobacco products because we know how addictive those can be and how they can be advertised as better or be advertised as healthier just because of the, how they're flavored. When we know in reality that they're not healthier, they're just flavored in a way that makes it more addictive. I think it would really break my heart if my sister started vaping or if you started smoking because, you know, there's just so many other things that people could be doing to help themselves. And I feel like when they start using um, products to cope with things, it makes things worse. All right, now that we've got that video, that introduction video out of the way, we're going to give you guys a quick technology overview. So this meeting will be recorded. Um, I'm sure it already popped up on y'all's screen. Um, however, any breakouts during the meeting will not be recorded. We will be sharing the recording and slides with everybody after the webinar today. We will also be taking questions in the chat today, so please feel free to ask any questions uh, in the chat to set to everyone. We, we are going to try to address all of the questions before the webinar concludes. But if you happen to run into any issues today with technology or accessing the meeting, please chat Elizabeth Williams privately and she will help you out. You can chat her privately by choosing her name from the drop down menu in the chat function. function. Uh, she just sent a chat, so that, that's the Elizabeth Williams to direct your questions towards. Uh, as she said, we also do have closed captioning available for this meeting, and you can turn that on in the service in the menu bar. Uh, we welcome and encourage questions throughout the webinar, so please feel free to put any questions in the chat function. We're going to answer as many questions as we can. Uh, next slide, please. And so today's presenters include Ms. Shana Bailey, Program Manager for Tobacco Endgame at the American Heart Association, uh, myself and Nikhil Patel. Uh, Shana joined the American Heart Association in August of 2021, and over the last decade, she has led tobacco control advocacy and policy efforts at the local, national, and international levels. Prior to joining AHA, Shana served with the Action on Smoking and Health, uh, served with Action on Smoking and Health, the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and the World Health Feder Federation based in Geneva, Switzerland. And now that we've introduced everybody, let's go ahead and go on to the agenda on the next slide. So during today's webinar, we will be covering tobacco and vaping facts and key, control, key tobacco control policies, including smoke-free air, tobacco taxation, flavors and menthol, and tobacco retail licensure. Over the after the presentation, we will go into breakout ses sessions where you all will meet other advisory group members, regional AHA staff, learn how to get involved with local campaigns, and we will also answer additional questions and have an open discussion. And now I would like to hand it over to Shana. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining this evening. I'm so excited to see all of you joining us and to have you with us this evening. Next slide, please. To kick it off, I'm going to give some background information on tobacco and vaping use to set the stage for our topic today. Next slide, please. Tobacco is still the leading cause of preventable disease, disability, and death in the US. Next slide, please. 2.5 plus million youth were current tobacco users in 2021. Now, I want you all to answer this question for me in the chat. Do you see a lot of your friends using tobacco products? If so, let us know in the chat function and send it to everyone so we can see your answers. Next slide, please. 
Vaping among teens and middle schoolers is a serious problem with 2 million high school and middle school students reporting that they are vaping. These kids are getting hooked on nicotine through peer and celebrity use, sleek packaging, attractive flavors, and targeted marketing. More kids are using these products and they're using them more often, indicating that more youth are becoming addicted. E-cigarettes are now the most used tobacco product by youth and adolescents. Not only are kids using e-cigarettes, but they are using them more frequently. 500,000 teens report vaping every single day. From 2019 to 2021, disposable e-cigarette use increased dramatically. Today, more than half of all teens who vape are using disposable products. Disposable e-cigarettes are immune to the federal regulation regarding flavored e-liquids. And we'll get into a little bit more about that in a, a later slide. Next slide, please. Here you can see a visual of many types of tobacco products, including cigarettes, menthol flavored smokeless tobacco, including snus, which can come in a pouch and chew or chewing tobacco, menthol cigarettes, and menthol flavored e-cigarettes, cigarillos and little cigars and hookah. Tobacco products galore that we have so many different types and they keep changing and keep evolving. Next slide, please. So what's in an e-cigarette? Electronic devices are sometimes called e-cigs, vapes, e-hookahs, vape pens, electronic nicotine delivery systems or ENDS. Some devices look like regular cigarettes, cigars or pipes. As the generation of products progresses, they are becoming sleeker and more colorful. Some even resemble a USB drive, as you can see on the right-hand side. When an e-cigarette is heated, a liquid solution that typically includes nicotine and flavorings creates an aerosol that the user inhales. That aerosol includes particles of metals and toxic chemicals that have, link have been linked to heart disease, respiratory disease, and cancer. While using an e-cigarette is often called vaping, the devices produce an aerosol, not a vapor. Vaping involves a diverse array of products that typically include a cartridge or a tank, a heating element, and a battery. Next slide, please. In most recent tobacco control news, this is hot off the press, Congress has given the FDA authority to regulate products made with synthetic nicotine as tobacco products. This includes Puff Bar. So what does that mean exactly? The FDA now has authority over all e-cigarettes, whether they're made with regular nicotine or synthetic nicotine. Under the new law, manufacturers of synthetic nicotine products must apply to the FDA and demonstrate a public health benefit in order to keep a product on the market. Any product not authorized by the FDA within 120 days becomes illegal and should be removed from the market. Speaking of Puff Bar, it is now the top preferred e-cigarette brand among youth. Puff Bar is a single use disposable e-cigarette that is designed similar to rather than natural nicotine derived from tobacco products. They claim that it was exempt from federal, state, and local laws regarding tobacco products. In anticipation of regulatory and policy action, Puff Bar has already designed a flavorless product called Clear, which you can see uh, in the lower left-hand side of the slide. It has also developed flavor caps that can be attached to flavorless devices to produce a similar flavor, which is also shown in the bottom left. You can see the photo of that mango crush. So I have another question for you. After hearing about all the different types of tobacco products, what is the most common type of tobacco product used by your peers? Let us know in the chat. Next slide, please. So let's play a little vaping trivia. I will put the question up here on the screen. And if you know the answer, type it in the chat. So we're gonna first put up the question and I'll wait a few seconds for you all to respond and then we'll give the answer. First question is, are e-cigarettes and vapes risk-free? Let us know what you think the answer is in the chat. Okay, let's get the answer. No, a lot of you are correct. E-cigarette aerosol actually contains harmful and potentially harmful substances, including nicotine, heavy metals, volatile organic compounds, and cancer-causing agents. Next slide, please. Okay, next question. How does nicotine impact health? I'll give you all a second to respond.
I see a few answers coming in. Okay, let's get the answer. Nicotine is a highly addictive and dangerous chemical. It is linked to increase in blood pressure, heart rate, flow of blood to the heart, and narrowing of the arteries. Exposure to nicotine during adolescence can disrupt normal brain development and may increase impulsivity and mood disorders. Next question. Are all e-cigarettes and vapes the same? Type your answer in the chat. I see a lot of resounding no's. Let's get the answer. No, they have little consistency across different products, including nicotine levels. Good job, everyone. Next question. Can e-cigarettes and vapes help you quit smoking? Type your answer in the chat. Okay, I love Paul's answer there. <laughs> Very scientific. Okay, let's get the answer. They are not proven methods for quitting smoking and are frequently used in addition to smoking rather than in place of cigarettes, even when people are trying to quit. So we always have to bring that caveat and give a very scientific answer to that question. So thank you all for participating in our little uh, vaping trivia game. Now we're gonna get into our key tobacco control policies. Next slide, please. And next slide. So I just wanted to make a note here tonight that we are not covering all of our tobacco control policies, uh, priorities during this webinar. Since we have a limited amount of time, we're just highlighting a few key policies. Our advocacy work around tobacco and e-cigarettes is designed to disrupt the current trend we are seeing with usage among kids. We are working at the local, state, and federal levels to address tobacco control. During this webinar, we will cover smoke-free air, tobacco taxation, flavors and menthol, and tobacco retail licensure. If you are interested in learning about all of our tobacco control policy priorities, please send us an email. Our contact info will be available at the end of the presentation. Next slide, please. The first policy we're going to cover is smoke-free air. So why do we even need smoke-free air? Secondhand smoke causes serious diseases and premature death among non-smokers. Everyone should have the right to breathe clean air. Smoke-free air laws ensure that that's possible. Children and the elderly are exposed to secondhand smoke more than others. This puts them at risk for chronic illnesses like heart disease and cancer. In addition, smoke-free laws help those who want to quit by providing them with an environment free from pressure or temptation to use tobacco. Next slide, please. Comprehensive smoke-free air laws are important to protect the health and safety of all people. They should include all forms of tobacco, including e-cigarettes, since they produce an aerosol that consists of toxic particles that have been linked to heart disease, respiratory diseases, and cancer. There should be no preemption of local ordinances. Now, what does preemption mean? I'm sure you've heard of that term quite a bit, and if you haven't, I'm about to let you know what it means. Preemption occurs when a higher level of government, such as state legislature, restricts or withdraws the authority of a lower level of government such as a city council to act on a particular issue. Comprehensive smoke-free air laws should also cover multi-unit housing, such as apartment buildings, where children, adolescents, the elderly, and the disabled are exposed at higher rates. Next slide, please. Now we're going to talk about tobacco taxes. Why do you all think that we should tax tobacco? Let's have you all answer in the chat. What do you think are some reasons that we should tax tobacco? Well, you can obviously see from uh, the first slide up here is that it helps us to protect our kids and promote health equity. If you have more answers, please keep on typing them in the chat. Next slide, please. They also raise significant revenue and help us save money. Next slide, please. And here are some even more examples of why we should tax tobacco. For examples, for example, they encourage smokers to quit. I saw some people responding with that. Uh, they fund tobacco cessation and prevention programs and so many more reasons. Next slide, please. Now we're gonna watch this video called, How Long Will You Target Me? Let's press play. How long will you target me? 
I mean, most of your friends have been banned, yet you still seek minorities. I don't get it. Mentor, how is it that you only allow the flavors not associated with black lives to be taken? I mean, am I paranoid, or is this a divisive plan to take out the black community? Anyway. I applaud your ability to market my people at a time where my people weren't considered marketable. But at what cost? Your strategy seems to be counterproductive. Although you gave money to community groups and political causes, your infiltration methods have also produced more black coffins. How many of the black youth are forced to see what's left of their parents' caucus? Yes, it is the choice to smoke you. But at what point does a choice become predetermination? You have pumped my community with advertisement and flavors. Advertisement and flavors. Advertisement and flavors. Your aggressive campaigning has led to generation on generation of learned behavior. Your targeting systems have locked solely onto my father, my mother, my sister, my brother, me. Can't you see the ever in your ways, but is it ever when it's done intentionally? In 1953, 5% of blacks who smoke consumed you, triple dead. 1968, 14% consumed you, triple dead. 1976, 42% consumed you. Now in the 2000s, 80% of blacks who smoke abuse you. Our death rates rise with your profits. And there is too much money to be made to stop it. Why should I hope to see change? You have created for us a new form of change, bondage, limited choices, a predetermined health condition, a cage. Your actions are Judas. You befriended me to infiltrate my core, disguised as feel good and relief. I finally stepped out of cause and seen the effects of how abusive you really are. I'm glad that I let you know about yourself. Because if we were really cool, you would let me go. But we're not. So, how long will you target me? Coming off of that video, it's a little heavy and it's very, very powerful. It is one of the most amazing things I've seen that has represented how the industry targets the black community. We're gonna put up a poll here and answer the question that comes up on your screen here. Did you know the tobacco industry used menthol tobacco products to target the black community? Yes or no? After you finished answering the poll question, I want you also to type in the chat, how did this video make you feel? What did you learn? Please type it in the chat. This video is incredibly, incredibly moving and you not only learn information from Ryan in his performance and his, his, um, his piece, but you're also getting the emotion behind it, which is really, really powerful. Great, so I'm gonna move on. Most people did know that uh, the tobacco industry used menthol products to target the black community. So thank you everyone for sharing your feelings about the video. So let's get into flavors, menthol being one of them. Tobacco products come in endless amounts of flavors like candy, fruit, menthol, and more. You can see here how popular flavored products are among youth tobacco users. Next slide, please. 84.7% of middle and high school e-cigarette users consume flavored products. The most popular flavors among middle and high school, among middle and high school e-cigarette users are fruit, candy, mint, and menthol. What are the most popular e-cigarette flavors used by your peers at school? Type your answer in the chat. Let us know. What's the most popular e-cigarette flavors that are used by your peers or friends or other people that you know who use um, who use e-cigarettes? Type it in the chat. Next slide, please. 
As you can see here, flavors are a huge concern among youth tobacco users. It is important to remember that all tobacco products, including flavored e-cigarettes, contain nicotine, which is harmful to the adolescent and developing brain. The most common reasons youth use e-cigarettes are the availability of flavors, use by a friend or family member, and the belief that they are less harmful than other forms of tobacco, such as cigarettes. Next slide, please. As you can see here by looking at these images, e-cigarette packaging often mimics candy products, sodas or cereals, and they even have similar names to attract youth. Now this is all by design. This is not a coincidence. This is not just by chance. This is 100% calculated by the e-cigarette companies and the tobacco industry. Next slide, please. Now let's talk about why menthol is so dangerous for youth and certain communities. Menthol masks the harshness of tobacco and makes it harder to quit. It's also heavily marketed to youth, Black, Hispanic, and LGBTQ communities. Next slide, please. So what can we do about menthol? Cities, counties, and states across the United States are eliminating the sale of all flavored tobacco products to protect our youth from a lifetime of nicotine addiction. Dr. Robert Califf, the new commissioner of the FDA, recently announced that the public should expect to see the specifics of a federal menthol cigarette ban by spring. So stay tuned everyone to get involved in that very soon. We're gonna be letting you know whenever we get the latest information. Next slide. Let's move on to tobacco retail licensure. Most places need a license to sell or provide a service. Currently, you do not need a license to sell tobacco products. Requiring stores to apply for a license will ensure that they follow the laws, including minimum sales laws. And some cities have actually already passed these laws. As you can see here, this GIF is uh, accurately representing how tobacco retail licensure can help when underage uh, customers are trying to purchase tobacco products in stores. Next slide, please. So we need tobacco retail licensing because tobacco products are everywhere and tobacco companies advertise where kids gather and shop. Next slide, please. We also need tobacco retail licensure because youth are using tobacco products and are able to buy tobacco products even when they're underage. We must protect racial and ethnic minorities from tobacco industry targeting. Next slide. So how does tobacco retail licensure work? We can monitor where tobacco products are being sold and who they're being sold to. Tobacco retail licensure holds retailers accountable to refuse sale of harmful and addictive products to youth. Licensing enables communities to know where tobacco products are being sold, and it can allow officials to set limits on the location, number, and types of stores that sell tobacco products. Fees from licensing can also be used to fund compliance checks, provide resources to enforce tobacco laws and to reduce illegal sales to youth. Next slide, please. And there you have it. Thank you so much to everyone for listening and learning about some of our key tobacco control policies. For more information on how to get involved in local, state and federal tobacco control advocacy and policy work, and to become a part of the tobacco endgame movement, please text endgame, that's E-N-D-G-A-M-E -E, to 46839. You can also visit our website, tobaccoendgame.org, or email me at tobaccoendgame at heart.org. Now I'm going to pass it over to Nick Hill. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Bathy. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Nikhil, and I'm 17 years old, and I live in North Carolina. I'm also a member of the Tobacco Endgame Movement, and I currently serve on the Tobacco Endgame Advisory Group. So on your screen, you'll see a map that indicates the five regions of the American Heart Association. The regions are the Eastern States, Midwest, Southeast, Southwest, and the Western States. Each region has two grassroots managers. Our grassroots managers love working with advocates to ensure that you can communicate with key legislators, connect with advocates near you, and stay up to date on the heart and stroke issues that matter the most to you. In the next few minutes, we're gonna move into breakout rooms so you can spend the next 30 minutes with your grassroots managers and other advocates. Breakout rooms are an easy way to collaborate in small groups. Next slide, please. This slide shows our regions um, in list form. So please review to find your region. If you're unable to find your region, please put a message in the chat with your state and someone will help you. Please click the breakout room on the bottom right of your screen. 
Then click to join the breakout room for your region. Your main screen will disappear while you're being placed in the breakout room. Once you're in the room, you'll see the other people there and your video and audio should be on. Your garage room manager will also be there to fac facilitate the conversation. Thank you so much for joining our chat today and we hope you enjoy your time in the breakout rooms. Thank you. 